I want to show you step by step on how you can get your copilot within Microsoft Copilot Studio to access, understand, and share external data to the people that are interacting with it right now. Now, first off, if that sentence sounds scary because your data is sensitive, I just want to share a blanket statement that Copilot respects any predefined privileges that is already set up for your data. And so, as you might be using APIs or custom connectors or Power Automate flows, just understand that Copilot is going to respect the privileges of those pieces. It does not um, trump those things, so to speak. So, that is just important to know. Now, when I say external data, I think this is important. Is I'm talking about stuff that, you know, is not like particular to your business, like some sort of database, some information, some records. And that could be potentially Microsoft Dataverse. If that is you, that is not going to be the this video. I'm gonna link this video here that I've already walked through how to connect Microsoft Dataverse to your copilot. You're gonna to wanna to check out that. But if your information is stored in some sort of database outside of Dataverse, then you are in the right place. That is what we are talking about on how to set that up in this video. And so here I am within Microsoft Copilot Studio and I have a coffee copilot example. And let's say that in some sort of database, you know, outside of Copilot, I have a, you know, a database of the different coffee types that my company in my coffee shop offers as our example. And so what we're looking to do here is you're going to need some sort of topic. And if you are looking to go and access information, I would recommend that you probably need a specific topic that does this one and only thing of going and getting the information that you need. And so if you need to create a topic, you can just by selecting add topic here, but I already have kind of created just a topic. There's nothing in here. Um, this is the exact screen you will see if you cl click add topic. And what we're doing here is there are a couple of different ways to go and access the information that you need. And that's kind of what we're talking about in this video. And the two that I want to show is with a power automate flow and with custom connectors. And we are not talking about in this video how to set up Power Automate flows or how to set up custom connectors, but more so of you have these flows, you have these Power Automates, these APIs already built. Now, how do we get Copilot to utilize them? And so here, what you're looking for is you're going to go ahead and select Add Node. And underneath Add in Action, you'll see kind of these three different tabs. I think these are kind of sneaky and hidden here. These basic actions are going to be obviously some basic actions, but mostly your Power Automate flows that are available for Copilot to trigger. What we're looking at then here is the connectors. And this is going to show all of the connectors that are currently available for Copilot to trigger, including any custom connectors that you have set up. And now in this scenario, I have not set up a custom connector, but the experience from this point on is exactly the same as Power Automates within Microsoft Copilot Studio. And so I, I understand this is a, a, you know, not, this is a, an order of coffee power automate, um, but nonetheless, bear with me. What you're going to see is you're going to see a node that looks much like this, and it's going to list out the inputs, the actual flow or connector itself, and then any outputs of that flow or connector. And these inputs need to be specific variables that your copilot has gathered and you can actually require or unrequire these inputs right now these first two are required and this last one is unrequired that would be defined within the power automate flow or the custom connector settings you cannot unrequire or require them once you're in this point here but what you're going to need to do is add certain variables into this and this is kind of the, the talking point of the, the, the video here in that this may not be as simple and straightforward and cookie cutter as you think it might be. And so there are a couple of different ways to gain, to get 
what are called variables within Microsoft Copilot Studio. Variables are just little pieces of information that you've gathered from the people Copilot is talking to. So for example, if you ask them their name, you can store their name Griffin as a variable, um, you know, the person's name variable, so to speak, and refer back to that variable throughout the, the Copilot or throughout the conversation. And so that is what we need to set up and how you get variables can de change dependent on your scenario. The most simple and straightforward one is going to be by adding question nodes. So here, if I go ahead and add a question node, you'll see that it is going to automatically create a variable for me and it's going to name it variable one. And you know, I can put in my question message here and maybe say, what sort of coffee do you want to know about for our available back to our available coffee example? And it's going to store that person's response in this variable. I could say, I typically like to leave spaces out of my variable names. I don't know if that actually makes any difference, but that's what I do. So here, that whatever they say back to whatever question I put in here, and this question can be a multiple choice question, it could be just a text question. Um, you could ask an age, a yes or no, a color, you know, all sorts of different different types of questions you can ask. And it's gonna store whatever value they respond with in this type of coffee variable. And then here in my inputs, I can actually now call on this type of coffee. And so say for example, you know, your scenario, this might be, you know, some record IDs or account numbers or phone numbers or names or addresses, like whatever these things could be, you need to gather that information in some way, shape or form. And I keep saying some way, like there's multiple ways to do this. And that is because just note, the more question nodes and things you add to this canvas, the less generative AI you're going to use. There are these things called topic inputs, which I think just are so valuable and are just not simply not documented that well. And that's also what I just want to highlight here. This is not a topic input deep dive. I actually have another video on that one in the Copilot Studio tutorial playlist that you can check out if you have more if you have more questions. But nonetheless, I am on my topic here and up here is kind of the topic details. If I click that, I can define topic inputs and you'll notice these are just variables. And these, you can define how the question is asked and um, the type of variable that it is. And that way it can just provide a better experience. And I think it's a lot simpler because it cleans up the canvas. It doesn't, it, it removes the ability for the copilot to feel like it really repeats itself. And it's, it might be not so structured and more human um, in how people are interacting with it. And so, that is what we are talking about here. And then you will get some level of output. You, your output might be, you know, a, a JSON block of just, you know, information. And if that's the case, you can now parse the JSON and use it accordingly um, underneath advanced. No, excuse me. It's underneath the variable management. You can parse any JSON values that your custom connectors or APIs are sending back to you, parse it and spit that information back out in a chat message like this. If I select send a message here, um, you will notice that there is actually an insert variable option. And here I can, uh, looks like my screen is jumping around, sorry about that. The output of this you know, connector or Power Automate flow is this variable called order. I can call on that order variable and send it back as a message. So at this point, you know, I'm gathering, I'm talking to Copilot, giving it the information it needs. Once it has everything it needs, it goes and acts, you know, connects through the custom connector or runs the Power Automate flow, brings some information back, potentially parses it and sends it back in a message that brings it back to me. I, I hope that makes sense. If you feel like I didn't actually answer the specific question that you have or that you have a particularly nuanced situation, be sure to reach out to me directly using the first link in the description down below. I'd love to get in direct one-on-one -on -one contact with you and help you in your situation. I'm super passionate about learning more about Microsoft Copilot Studio and helping other people learn as well so that we can all just, we can all just learn together.
Thank you so much for sticking to the end of the video. If you have further, you know, other things that you are setting up for your co-pilot, be sure to follow this video or playlist of videos here. That is a host of different tutorials, things like topic inputs, things like triggering Power Automate flows, things like parsing JSON within Copilot Studio. You can do that there. Thanks so much for sticking to the end of the video. I'm excited to connect with you in the next one.